supposed to be done with friends. It's Thanksgiving yes. weekend. We've got family, we've got friends around, we've got kiddos. This one's for them as well. And then exhale, dropping the hands on the inside of our right foot. 90 degree bend in that right knee, back leg is relaxed. Our reason why, our main goal, what we're trying to fight for every single day, even the days when we don't want to work out, how are we staying disciplined to the workout? Come on, stop! Ah. I'm telling you, too much of that turkey leg! Hey. Too much Ten. of that stuffing! Ten! Woo! Ah. Mashed potato, mashed potato, mashed potato. Turkey, 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 turkey. Turkey, turkey, turkey. I like ham. Turkey, turkey, turkey. I like ham. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody! Woo! Where my ham people at? Yeah! <laughs> we don't need turkey. No, but we do need stuffing. We do need stuffing. Stuffing is always a go-to, right? Yes, there. definitely need some stuffing. All right, well, we promised you a fun class today. We're bringing back the power of five back when we first started doing these virtual classes. So, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be doing five different movements, building up each time. So doing one of each movement, then two of each movement, three, four, and then we're gonna hit our fifth, and then we're gonna do that five times at five of each of each exercise. Whoa, 25. Yeah, so we're gonna be doing this uh, EMOM style. So we're really bringing like everything together, morphing it into one class. So Love that. every minute on the minute, EMOM, we're gonna be doing our power of five movements. So the first minute of work, we're gonna be doing one jumping jack, one squat with two front kicks, one reverse crunch, one push up, and one burpee, all right? Do that just once, and then we're waiting until the next minute starts. So if you finish that movement or those moves in 15 to 20 seconds, you have 45, 40 seconds of rest time where we're going to be doing a little bit of shadow boxing in between. So for those that have not taken a kickboxing class before, the first two breaks in those first two minutes, we're gonna be teaching you how to throw a jab, how to throw a cross, and how to throw two body hooks in that movement. So pause there. Those of you who are members, you're obviously a member because you got here, you, you found it. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be done with friends. It's Thanksgiving yes. weekend. We've got family, we've got friends around, we've got kiddos. This one's for them as well. If you don't have anyone, totally fine. The class is designed where you can do this solo like you're used to, but pause it right now. Go get your homies, go get your friends, go get your family. Uh, let's do this together. It's gonna be an interactive class. So yeah. um, as Connor's describing there, for new people that don't know how to kickbox, that's who we're talking to. We're talking to your friends so and your family, so. Go, go pause right now, pause. Hey, right, cool, 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 welcome cool. new people, welcome. Yes. Welcome to your first virtual class with us. It's almost like we're restarting the whole thing. Yeah, let's do it again. So here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, um, so for those that have just joined us and you brought your family and friends, whoever was in the household with you to take this class with you, take it at your own pace, right? We're always here just to get moving, especially on a day where we wanna be thankful, we wanna be with friends, we wanna be chilling. Uh, maybe this is the day where we just go at like 25%, just kind of go through the motions of it because doing something is better than doing nothing. All right, so I'll explain it again. We're going through that EMOM style. Every minute on the minute, we're going to be doing exercise moves in between. So for the first minute, you're doing one of each movement. The second minute, you're doing two of each movement, three of three, four of four, and then five of five. And then once we hit that fifth one, we're going to still continue that EMOM, the every minute on the minute, but you're going to do it five of every movement. All right, so for those that are new, if you want to break that down to three or two, whatever is going to be best for you, especially if you want to take it easy today, I'll leave that in your hands. With my members, we're sticking with five. We got to be at five, especially if we're going to be out of the gym for a little bit. All right, we'll talk you through it all. We'll be here doing it with you. So, Beautiful. so get some room out, clear any of the hardwood uh, tables out of the way, get some cushion now, whatever we got to do. We're going to go through our aisle kiwi warm up to start off. Remember the knee hug to the knee outs to going through our stretches. So we'll demo that right now. We're only doing one on each side. So let's warm up the body here. Let's go ahead and grab whatever knee we want to start with. Brenton starting with his left knee. He's bringing it right up to his chest. And then he's going to step out into a deep, lunge. He doesn't need to be super deep in the lunge, but enough to where we're starting to feel that stretch in that right hip flexor if our right leg is fully extended. As you can see, he's taking a big breath in, helping calm his body down, and as he exhales, he's going to drop those hands right on the inside of that left foot. 90 degree bend on that left leg, the back leg is relaxed. We're going to go ahead and take that left elbow and bring it down to that left big toe as much as we can, right? We don't want an 8 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 pain. A six or a seven is good. And then we're gonna go ahead and exhale, rotate, and have our eyes follow the hand. Big extension there, just to try to open up the mid and upper back there. 
Then we're going to go ahead and place that left hand on the outside of our left foot. And then we're going to go ahead and try to straighten that left leg as much as possible. All right. Some are more flexible than others, especially if it's our first, second class. This might be uh, somewhat intolerable, but we try to work past those moments. Just make sure you're breathing here. All right. Once you feel good and comfortable there, work your way back up to a standing position. And then we're going to just do the opposite side. We're going to bring that right knee up to the chest. Give it a nice little pull. If you want to grab the ankle too and the knee to pull it up, you get the piriformis there on the glute. And then we'll go ahead and take that step out to that far runner's lunge, deep lunge position. This time we're focusing on that left hip flexor. So as we inhale, maybe we lean back a little bit to engage it even more. And then exhale, dropping the hands on the inside of our right foot. 90 degree bend in that right knee, back leg is relaxed. And again, taking that right elbow down to that right big toe and big exhale, big reach up to the ceiling. Eyes follow the hand. Good, wiggle it if you want to. And then we'll drop that right hand on the outside of your right foot and go ahead and try to straighten that front leg. All right, if we're, if we're sitting at home a lot, if we're working from home, this is a great little routine. How long did that take us? Five minutes to do one on each side. And I'm sure once you stand up out of this position, you'll feel a lot better and a lot looser in the body here. All right? Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa, dude. Whoa. Noodle leg. Noodle leg. Stay anyway. Good. All right. We're good to go. Feel free to do that one or two more times. If you have the time to do that, you can always pause the video right now and do that. Or we can get right into our exercise portion. We're working for 10 minutes. That is it. But it's going to be a tough 10 minutes depending on how many times you go through each exercise, right? Our members, we want to get to that five range. For us newcomers, we can get to two or three, or maybe we just stick with one because you just want to see what the workout's all about, all right? So every minute on the minute, we'll be working. The movements that we're going to be doing, jumping jacks, squat with a front kick on each side, that considers one. Then we're going down on the mat for a reverse crunch. On the glutes, hands by our side if we need that support, and again, bringing the whole body up together and then making yourself as long as possible too. So that's the goal here. Then flipping over to a high plank position for one push up, boom. And then one burpee, bringing our entire foot onto the mat and then jumping up to complete the power of five right there. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're gonna do in our first minute, right? One of each movement. Then we got about 40, 45 seconds of rest, depending on how long that takes you to do each one where we're gonna be learning how to throw a jab and a cross. So we're gonna be learning quickly. Just to give you a tip, pretend you're fighting in a phone booth. So my kids out there that don't know what a phone booth is, just make sure your elbows don't leave your side. You have to stay as tight as possible. And the only way to go out is to be a rock'em sock'em robot, in a sense, right from the shoulders. All right, just make sure palms no face wings. down. No chicken wings. All right, and then we'll throw our hooks. Hooks, we want a 90 degree bend in our arm and rotating into each one, all right? Easier said than done, I get that, especially if it's a new movement, but we work through it. We'll get there. We've talked a lot. Now we're going to get that workout going. Again, jumping jacks, squats with a front kick on each side, reverse crunch, push up, and burpee. Every minute on the minute. We're going to go for 10 minutes right now. Starting with our first minute, right about now. Let's go ahead. One jumping jack, one squat with a front kick on each side, one reverse crunch. Bring that body up, then flip to that high plank for one push up. And then we're back onto our feet with a big jump. That's completed. Round number one, done. We got 45 seconds if you're keeping pace with Brenton. So right now, we're just gonna be working on our jabs. So that's our front leg and front arm. So if we're right-handed, we want the left leg in front. Just throwing that left arm out back and forth, keeping it at shoulder level, right? The quickest way from point A to point B in this instance is a straight line. Now let's go ahead and throw that cross now. When we throw a cross, Big misconception is it's just the upper body, but we want to move the whole body with it. So that's where we're turning that hip over where you can see Brenton's foot moving. So throw that cross a couple more times here. We got 10 seconds until we get to go again, where we're doing two of each movement. Jumping jacks, squats with a front kick, squat with a front kick, two reverse crunches, two push-ups, and two burpees. Ready, set, here we go team. Two jumping jacks. Then we're down one squat with a front kick on each side, another squat with a front kick on each side. Then we're going into those two reverse crunches, bringing the knees all the way up to the chest every time. Then flip into that high plank and again, dropping for two push-ups. Do them on the knees, do them on the toes, whatever you need to do here. And then right into two burpees. That's one and that's two. Good, breathe here, breathe. Got about 35 seconds here. 
Now we're gonna be working on our hooks. So hooks, drop that right arm down to a 90 degree angle and turn the right foot as you move the upper body. Notice I didn't say hand, move the upper body, not the hand. All right, same thing with the left side. 90 degree bend, rotate to the body. Keep working through that. We got about 13 more minutes. This is when the intensity starts to get a little bit more intense. <laughs> so as we go through it, we're doing three of each movement. Let's stay disciplined here, team. Ready, set, go ahead. Three jumping jacks, three squats, each with their own front kick style. Nice, beautiful. And last one, now we're down on the mat for those reverse crunches. Remember, we're going at our own pace here. If you keep it up with Brenton, fantastic. If not, fantastic. It's your class, you dictate the speed here. Just remember, we're going every minute on the minute. Finishing up with these three burpees. Now, great timing, 30 seconds to freestyle jab, cross, and hooks. If you wanna go back to that jab, back to that cross for this round especially, that's perfect, all right? It's all about fundamentals, especially when we're just learning. Right? We don't want to do things too fast and go wrong because it's very hard to correct the things that we do wrong, especially if we've been doing it over and over again. All right? So straight out in front of us every time. All right? Fighting your evil twin. That's what we like to say in class. Keep going here. We got five seconds until we do four of each movement. Stay with it, team. Here we go. Go ahead, team. Four jumping jacks. Four squats with the front kicks. On those front kicks, remember, we're just trying to drive that foot forward, all right? That's all it is, working the hamstrings, working the hip flexors as we extend through. And then we're hitting those four reverse crunches right after those squats and front kicks, then doing those four push-ups. Again, some of us are stronger than others. That might be the weakest point of this power of five, but we have to do what we can. Don't worry about weaknesses. That is a typical thing. Now we're into that rest period again. If we're already there, if not, keep working through that EMOM. We're still going freestyle punches. Now, if you feel comfortable with an uppercut, if you feel comfortable with another front kick or two, this is your opportunity to just focus on the breathing a little bit. The breathing might get very, very heavy at some points. That is when you have to realize that you have to control that breathing because panting is only gonna make it worse. Five of each movement. This is when we start the real hard work here, team. Ready? Set, five jumping jacks, five squats with each front kick on each side, five reverse crunches, five push-ups, and five burpees. This is gonna be tough on our body, but this is what we need, especially my members. We're staying true to what we want, our reason why, our main goal, what we're trying to fight for every single day, even the days when we don't wanna work out. How are we staying disciplined to the workout? Because. Discipline is delaying that instant gratification. We have to get past that. I don't wanna do stuff because I'm not gonna feel tired. You wanna feel tired in these moments alone. 20 seconds of shadow boxing. Keep it light if you're having a hard time breathing, right? Slow it down a little bit. If we're still working, keep going, keep pushing through. Just know the rest periods are gonna get shorter, but that doesn't mean we can stop. That just means we just gotta keep working so that when the time is up, we can go right back into it again. Starting the five again, jumping jack squats. Here we go, team. Five of each again. This is the second time through. We're gonna go through this three more times. This is an upgraded power of five. We are at that point where we can level ourselves up. Even if we feel like we can't, it's always a good habit to get that mindset going. Once you're done with those squats and front kicks, you're repping those reverse crunches out. Again, put the hands down if you need that support. The heavier the hands, the more support. The lighter the hands, the least support and the more intense the movement goes. Push-ups again can be done on the knees and those burpees, just make sure we're repping those out regardless if we're jumping them or walking them. Brenton's setting a great pace right now. Each and every time, he's got about 20 seconds left of recovery time. It's obviously getting more intense. No matter who is doing this, it's always gonna push you. But it's up to the person to determine how the breathing is controlled at the rest periods to dictate how much time and effort they can put into the next quality of reps. Beautiful. Keep this going. And let's hit it again, team. Go ahead. Right into our five sets of everything. One more time. This is our third time through. We are at that halfway point. In fact, each time you do this, you're getting closer and closer to the end. Funny how that works. But hey, we gotta stay mentally in tune. We gotta stay with it every single time. 
because it's important for us to stay disciplined and keep the habit and keep the routine. So keep pushing through. For those that are taking the first class with us, I applaud you for even getting into this position because it's not an easy thing to do. All right, let's stay with it, keep going. Love that. We are at a perfect pace. Great job here, Brenton. Great job at home. Keep using this time to keep improving. 20 seconds again of recovery if you are at pace with Brenton. And again, feel free to decrease the number if you have not already done so. Please, please, please do what's best for you, especially if you want to take it at 25% today. We're hitting about 75 or 80% of what we can actually attain through these combos. Here we go, let's do it again. Fourth time through, five of each movement. Really staying with it right now. This is when we can start to get the negative self talk into our head, talking to ourselves and, oh, I can't do this, I'm too weak for that. All right, get past that point. We have to get better. Sometimes you're just gonna suck at things and we just gotta learn to embrace that suck to get a little bit better at it each and every time. That's the improvement that we're looking for. That's how we're gonna get stronger, not only physically, but mentally as well. Keep going through it, team. Love this pace that we're setting for ourselves. Make sure when we get to that rest period, we're really utilizing it to focus on our breathing. I sound like a broken record, but it's very easy to forget that at times. Breathing really fast can feel good in the moment, but it's just elevating our heart rate even more. If we can slow that heart rate down by slowing our breathing down, you'll realize how much more you can do when the time comes to perform. All right, here's our last time through it. Three, two, one, Woo! here we go again. Finish off strong, finish the fastest you've done yet. Even if we've just been continuously working because it's taken us a minute to get through all five movements, then that's it. This is the last point. This is the last push that we need to have here, team. So who's gonna be able to accomplish that? Regardless of how long it takes, can you get five of each movement done on your fifth movement? Like I said, we've been doing this for nine and a half minutes already. That's a lot of time to work. A lot of time to put the effort out. Love that. Way to finish strong. We're gonna finish with shadow boxing until this last minute is done, and then we are complete with our workout. Just like that, we have finished. Keep throwing jab crosses, hooks, uppercuts, uppercuts and front kicks. Last 15 seconds here until we move on to our next, next segment of class. Keep going, team. Keep pushing hard. Even if we're still on those power five movements, finish those burpees out if we can. Three, two, and one. Nice, team. Grab some water, pause the video if you need to. We do have more to do, but it's going to be friendly. We wanted you to bring people around so that we could do partner drills together. So we didn't mention at the beginning of the class, but if you can, if you have extra pair of gloves, great. Go grab your extra pair of gloves, distribute them to anybody who's using them. Um, just be conscious of who's around and who's going to be participating in these bag rounds, right? Uh, excuse me, partner drills, not bag rounds. So when we're doing partner drills, if you only have one pair of gloves, you're just gonna have to decrease the power, right? The more fun with the gloves, but if we only have one pair of gloves, that means the person who's punching is wearing the gloves and the person who does not have the gloves is catching. Remember, we always want to do like a high five to somebody. Palm faces the punch, regardless if you're doing a jab or a cross. And we've taught you how to throw a hook, the 90 degree bend and turning with the body. So if the punch is coming in at that body range at that level, we wanna make sure the hand meets that position as well. All right, so we're gonna do various combinations of jab, cross, jab, cross, hook, 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 whatever it may be, we're gonna be doing it all. All right, so we're gonna be demoing with one pair of gloves. That way we can show you what we mean by switching them on and off. So he's gonna throw a certain amount of combos at a time, then he's gonna take his gloves off, I'm gonna grab the gloves, and then I'll be throwing the punches. So when we're catching these punches, I'm not gonna wear them. Yeah, I know, but you just want them cool. Yep. Yep. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, when we're throwing jab crosses, right? We'll throw that jab. Remember, the jab is the front leg and the front arm. So if our left leg is in front of our right, our left arm is our jab, and we're gonna be shooting across the body. All right, so left hand goes to my left hand, his right hand comes to my right hand. And like I said, we're catching the punches. So we wanna make sure that when we're throwing, when we're catching a jab, we're almost catching the punch like you would a baseball, for instance. But don't close the fingers, keep the hand open, all right? Jab and then cross, just like that, all right? Especially if you're with somebody new, 
Make sure that power is very minimal so they understand the concept, right? We're not catching jab cross here in the face because nobody wants to get hit, the, <laughs> hit in the face. We wanna make sure that we're going correctly and not causing injury risk. So hands right over front of the shoulders, keep the arms strong, jab and cross. All right, now that we've gotten through with that, we're gonna go into our rounds. We're gonna do five rounds, one minute on, one minute off, all right? Each time we're gonna be having a different move, uh, different combination. The first combination we're gonna be throwing five times in a row. It's jab, cross, jab, jab, cross, and jab, cross, cross. Throw that five times, then if you only have one pair of gloves, take the gloves off, give them to the other person who can throw the punches, but if you have two pairs, like most members do, you can just exchange the punches, all right? Just make sure one's catching, one's punching. Obviously, if you have gloves on each person, you can punch a little bit harder, but again, if it's your first time, do not punch at 100%. You're just gonna risk injury, and that's no fun, especially on a day where we're with family. We don't want that, all right? One thing I'll add too, if you don't have a partner for whatever reason, totally fine. Pick one of us that you're gonna follow along with, because we are gonna be trading whether or not you're the catcher or the thrower. If you don't have a second person, work with one of us, and then while the other person is working, that's your rest time. Right? You just pair up with that person so you always stay on track. Beautiful. Like I said, five different rounds, a minute on, a minute off. Then we'll go into uh, the next round. Easy enough. Sounds Easy good. Enough. Yeah. All right, I'll be catching first. Brenton will be punching first. So if you are solo today, just pick one of us to mirror, and then we'll go through it together. Jab, cross, jab, jab, cross, jab, cross, cross. Five times and switch it up. We got a minute to work. Ready, set, here we go team. Jab, cross, jab, jab, cross, and jab, cross, cross. All right, go at your own pace. You know the combo to do. You just have to make sure that you're doing it correctly. So pace yourself. Do it for the first time slow if you need to. But again, we're just here to have some fun, to bring a little change into our virtual class. So hopefully later on, we can go right into it at a different time. All right, team, we got about 30 seconds left, so it looks like just me and him are just gonna get through it once. Jab, cross, jab, jab, cross, <laughs> jab, cross, cross, jab, cross. Notice I'm keeping my shoulders nice and tight, right? I'm not throwing my punch all the way out to meet him. I'm letting it mostly come to me, but of course, I'm still giving a little bit of resistance there so that I don't hurt my shoulder in the process. Woo. Coaching and coordinating, that's tough. <laughs> Jab, cross, cross, cool. nice. And that's, that's time. time. All right, so the first time through might have been a little funky, but that's all right. That's what we're here to just kind of work through. It. Again, this is the first time we're doing partner drills in our virtual classes, so it's gonna be a little different for us as well. Cool, second time through, we're doing jab, cross, hook. All right, we're gonna do that five times. Jab, cross. Now when we throw a hook on our partner drills, that person is still creating a 90 degree bend in their arm, the catcher is, and that person is gonna match that 90 degree arm, but we're gonna rotate. Biggest thing is we wanna keep a straight forearm. The wrist should not be bent. So bring that elbow out a little bit more. This is gonna be one of those tricky ones where it's gonna take some time. It might not be something you get right away, and that's okay. Just work yourself through it. Make sure the forearm is straight. That's the biggest thing. Again, jab, cross, hook. We're gonna do that five times, then we're gonna switch the partner up, then we're gonna go into jab, cross, hook, cross five times. So we'll make sure that everybody gets at least one round of that done, regardless if it takes you a minute or not. Alrighty, so he'll do it five times, I'll do it five times, we'll go to the next one five, we'll finish on me as well. So everybody's getting that one time through. I'm gonna put my gloves on so it makes our transition a little bit easier. Brenton, you'll start us off, jab, cross, hook. Take your time here. Nice and even with the punches. Two. Remember, you're going jab and hook. The left side is being thrown twice, so that's where it can be a little bit challenging. Jab, cross, hook. There's one. Jab, cross, hook. And saying it too can really make a difference in the combination. There's five. Perfect. So once you guys are done with each one, add a, a cross to that. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Nice, once you find that rhythm, you can really get into a good flow with you and your partner. Jack, cross, hook, cross, two. Then we can get each punch to flow just as it was, like an actual drill, all right? 
So finish that off if you're there. That's all we're gonna be doing for that second round. All right? Good, take some break, shake out the arms, grab some water, switch the gloves off, especially if you have like eight, 10 people around right now. Don't be afraid to change around. Give other people a chance to throw that stuff too. All right, now we're going jab, cross, hook, hook. We're gonna do that 10 times in a row. Jab, cross, hook, hook. Jab, cross, hook, hook. 10 times, so use that pattern, all right? Use that cadence. Jab, cross, hook, hook. Jab, cross, hook, hook. We will. Anyway, old class, old class. And then, of course, partner two will then throw jab, cross, hook, hook. And then we're gonna go uh, right hook, left hook, cross. Right hook, left hook, cross. So that's what we'll get into. So one of each will be jab, cross, hook, hook 10 times. Partner two will do that. Then partner one will go back and go right hook, left hook, cross. Right hook, left hook, cross, but only doing that five times. And then partner two will do it five times as well. Cool. All right? Again, always is a lot. Um, follow along with us. We'll keep, uh, we'll keep verbalizing it as we go so you can just match our cadence uh, and save yourself the confusion if you're feeling it. Jab, cross, hook, hook 10 times to your team. Jab, cross, hook 10 times. Ready, set, go ahead. Cross, hook, four. Cross, hook, two. Again, just using that cadence. Slow it down if you need to. Obviously, we've been doing this forever and ever. We want to get the workout done too. But if this is your first time through it, Obviously, probably not going to go this fast. And then I'm going go. for the five again, or are you going? No, I'm going to go right. mine. Yeah, One, two, yeah, keep those forearms two, straight. Keep those forearms four, straight. Yeah, cross, five, six, yeah, cross, hook, six, yeah, cross, hook, nine. So once you guys and your partners finish that, you're going to go right hook, left hook, cross, five times. Right. So starting with the hooks and ending with that power strike. All right, here we go. Right hook, left hook, cross. Right hook, left hook, cross. Beautiful. Again, slow that down if you need it, especially if you don't have gloves on, you should not be hitting as hard as we are. Right, left, cross. Right, left, right is a great way to interpret that as well. One more for good luck. In time! All right, that is our third partner drill and partner round done with. All right, it may be a lot. We're right, we're, we're up and through a lot of these combos right now. And round four is going to be jab cross, duck cross. So we are bringing this back. We haven't done a duck in a long time. Actually, we didn't want to have one in class a little bit ago. But a couple weeks back, yeah. Whenever we do a duck, we're not just bending down at the hips, right? We want our eyes to be on the prize the entire time. So if I'm doing a partner drill with Brenton, and I'm going to throw jab, cross, I'm not just going to look down and then, <laughs> and then come up for a cross. I want to get down into a squat position. That's the easiest way to throw the, or to move into a duck. So jab, cross. Duck and cross, right? There's obviously ways to make it way more efficient, but this is the first time you're ducking. We want to make sure that we're just dropping one head length down. So one more time, jab, cross, turkey, <laughs> and, and cross. Yes, turkey. We'll call it turkey. Yeah, jab, it. cross, turkey, cross. <laughs> All right? So that's what we're going to work on. We're going to do it five times on his side, five times for me, then we'll repeat it. You'll do it five times again, then I'll do it five times again. The duck can be a little confusing, especially if you're coming out with a cross afterwards. That's what makes it fun, all right? Person throwing the uh, head hook to get the person to duck, you're obviously going way above their head. You're not throwing at their head to make sure they duck. Yeah, right? don't hit them. Give them a little haircut, maybe, but don't hit them. Haircuts encouraged. Yeah. Haircuts encouraged. All right, jab, cross, turkey, cross. Here we go. Jab, cross. Go, go, go. <laughs> jab, cross. Jab, cross, turkey, cross. Jab, cross, oh, turkey, cross. Jab, cross, turkey, cross. Nice. All Remember, right. is load that back leg, right? When you shift that weight on that duck, you're loading up the right side, so boom, you've got all that extra power. So don't forget those details just because we're inviting our friends to the party. Beautiful. Jab, cross, go, go, go. Jab, cross, go, go, Haircut. <laughs> Jab, cross, go, go, go. Jab, oh, 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 oh. Jab, cross, go, go, cross. There you go. Now we have the uh, pattern. We know the rhythm here. So for those that are doing it again and you haven't switched to a different person, 
Now we can start to get a little bit faster and maybe come into that cross a little bit quicker. Again, make sure the hands are far away from the face coming out of a squat. Jab, cross, go, go, cross. Jab, cross, cross. Notice the eyes stay on the prize the whole time. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Hook, cross. Jab, cross, go, go. Go, go. There you go. That is our fourth and final round. Uh, no, not one more. One more. We got one more to do. We got one more to do. So I'll give us a little minute rest here. Cross, hook, cross, duck this time. Cross, hook, cross, duck. Cross, hook. Cross, duck. Cross, hook, cross, duck. Now my, my uh, catching crew, whoever is the one doing the, throwing the fake punch and catching the punches, don't confuse yourself. The right hand is just gonna stay put the whole time, right? The left one's got the hook and the duck, but if you get confused and you get in mix match between hands, just keep your right hand steady. It's gonna be there the whole time. Yes, perfect way to explain that especially if it's starting to get a little too complicated and we're still a little fatigued from the power of five, keep that right hand, it's just not even moving. All right, keep it straight. Let that person connect to the glove. Don't always try to reach for them, right? You wanna be on the same page. One way to create chemistry is for one person to stay still the whole time so you guys can both understand the range and where your gloves need to be the whole time. Definitely. All right, love that. One minute down, last minute of work here. Well, you know what? We're gonna just go two times each, regardless of how long it takes us. Cross, hook, cross, then get into that squat slash ducking motion. All right, here we go, five times. Cross, hook, cross, one, one. cross, hook, go, two, go. three, four, five. five. Finish it, nice. All right, my turn. Here we go. Go, go. shake it out. Partner two, whoever else is going with it, let's get it going again. Cross, hook, cross, duck. Cross, hook, cross. Oh! Okay, quick. Ah! One more. Woo! Alrighty, last time, partner two, cross, hook, cross, gobble, gobble. Let's do it ten times as fast as you can. Ready? Alrighty. to be uh, too afraid of, I guess to say. That's fine. If you want to do those partner drills again, rewind the video, restart it because we did talk a lot, we did explain a lot, so it, made it might have been a little confusing for those that are the first time users, but hey, we're with family. We want to have fun, we want to work out because we love our bodies, not because we hate our bodies. And one thing I do ask, it's very corny, very cheesy, but let's be thankful for those people around us. Sometimes. We take for granted a lot of the people in our lives. We don't take the time to really appreciate them for what they really do for us. And it's a simple, hey, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for being a part of my life. As small or as simple as that may seem, if you say that to somebody, if somebody says that to you, it's automatically gonna bring a smile to your face. So remember that feeling right there. Of, Damn, that, that felt really, really good. I appreciate you telling me that. Repay that favor to somebody else or to that same person, especially if they're saying thankful for you they're obviously a good part of your life. So you're obviously thankful for them too. So I encourage you guys, go and spread that thanks. Go express that gratitude to somebody in your life because it's always gonna bring a smile to their face. And we're in a time where we need smiles, that's for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, it goes without saying that gratitude can have these big impacts. And obviously we all think about it this time of year because of the holiday that's designed to remind us to be grateful. But as many of you feel um, this place has been maybe the only way you can get out of the house uh, when you're cooped up, when you're quarantined, 
a lot of the outlets you have if you don't have something like this are on social media, which can be really uh, negative on our, our mental health if you find yourself stuck comparing too often. Um, we all do it, right? I, I'm capable of it too. You see this curated content, you think that's the way you should be to be happy and it doesn't line up with how you view your world and all of a sudden you're in a bad mood, you're upset, or you think you're worthless. One way that we can mitigate that feeling when we see it all day long, we're gonna be forced to deal with that, is reminding yourself of the things you've been blessed with, the situations that you've gotten that uh, you're really thankful for that maybe you didn't deserve, but you get to reap the benefits anyway, or that person who just told you they were grateful and cheered you up, um, even though that you weren't expecting it. All these kind of things can you know, really fight against that negativity, that comparison game that we all too often play. A simple practice of reminding yourself what you're grateful for can help make that negative impact way less substantial. So um, just another soapbox I can hop off of now, but just another reason that just constantly looking for ways to show gratitude, to be grateful and to express that to others, it's just so paramount to our mental health, y'all. Thank you so much for being a part of our class. I am thankful for all of you guys. You guys give me the best job in the world. I get to uh, come to work every day with a big smile on my face knowing I get to see you guys. So thank thank you to you and thank you to you as well you. for being a good co-worker and a best friend for me. So appreciate everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Eat some food. Enjoy the time. We out. Happy turkey day, y'all. Peace.